Hello, everyone. Uh, Dave, uh, just um, make sure Hello, you're there. I'm here. Okay, excellent. Good morning. So, good morning. And thank you all for being here. We'll talk a little bit about uh, vibration testing, vibration monitoring today. And uh, just want a brief introduction um, about who we are and what we do. So, Dave, I'll let you start with the PCB. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm hoping everybody knows about PCB, but I'm going to talk just real quickly about us. Um, we've been around since 1967, uh, focusing on vibration sensors. That's how we were founded. Uh, uh, we have a, our headquarters building is in outside of Buffalo in a little town called Depew is our uh, main headquarter building and manufacturing facility. Uh, we also do some manufacturing in North Carolina as well. Um, adjacent to our headquarter uh, manufacturing building, we have a 50,000 square foot machine shop um, where we make all of our all of our components to build our sensors and cables and everything else that we make in, within PCB. Uh, we're very vertically integrated, so we control all of our all of our parts ourselves. We aren't relying on other vendors to uh, supply us machine parts or certain certain things needed to build our sensors or or cables or other accessories we have. Um, we were uh, we were recently acquired by Amphenol um, back a few months ago, so we're going through some uh, some of those uh, growth initiatives. And I also wanted to mention in this slide that we, we acquired in Devco, which some of you may have heard of, uh, used to be a mega company uh, a couple of years ago. So we're integrating them still today within our within PCB and it's, everything's going well with that. And hopefully pretty soon we'll be a really big, happier family. We are the world leader in, in sensors uh, for any, just about any industrial application you can think of. We are very big in the power gen industry, providing high temperature accelerometers and dynamic pressure sensors uh, to those um, power gen companies need them, which apply a lot to uh, uh, the major OEMs within the uh, power gen industry. Real big in aerospace and defense, automotive, rail, test and measurement. Um, you know, just like I said, any any application out there in market. Um, and we are kind of the kind of the leader in low cost vibration monitoring solutions. And by that, I just mean the complete complete solution uh, for monitoring a you know, uh, low cost type of uh, system. All right, thank you, Dave. And um, um, this is Marco, and I'm I'm here in Cincinnati, Ohio, with the Moto Shop. Uh, we've been around for 30, uh, 30 years in here in Cincinnati. We just moved to a new uh, facility, pretty nice and spacious. And we are a world leader in dynamic sensor calibration. Uh, in you know field metrology as well as lab metrology for uh, sound and vibration sensors and um, we also designed uh, the digiducer it's a USB digital accelerometer we'll be talking a little about that today and we also have one of the most popular portable vibration calibrators out there that people use to validate and check their vibration uh, measurement systems. Uh, myself, I'm a mechanical engineer uh, from Brazil. I got my, my, my degree at the University of Sao Paulo and I got my master's degree uh, here in the States with Purdue University. Uh, been with the Moto Shop since 2005. I'm uh, working on product development of digital products uh, as well as uh, shaker testing systems, and been helping customers um, solve their sound vibration problems for approximately 
20 years in helping designing products in uh, on the test industry as well as the consumer product industry. What about you, Dave? Can you tell me who you are? Yeah, I'm Dave. Um, I've been with uh, PCB for uh, about five years. I'm a mechanical engineer. And I've got a lot of uh, industrial and energy experience. I've been doing uh, something about something with vibration um, monitoring and dynamic pressure monitoring for over 25 years. I uh, started out working, um, and I worked way back, if anybody's heard of IRD, um, I worked with them and then into SKF and Vibrometer as things evolved in time. Um, I, I got a lot of, a lot of uh, application experience in, in many different applications, both in paper mining, manufacturing, and so on and so on. You know, I focused on a lot of these key applications early on in my career where I took care of strictly pulp and paper and then switched over to mining when I got bored with pulp and paper and, and so on. But I currently uh, hold a business development manager uh, for PCB, um, looking over certain geography for the industrial and energy markets. So I am a category three vibration analyst and I've been a member of the API uh, 670 committee for over 20 years writing those documents as they change over time. Uh, you know, as, as PCB in general and the Modal Shop, all, all of our companies within the PCB and Modal Shop families, you know, we we know PowerGen. Uh, this is a PowerGen uh, series. It's the final one in our series. And we hope you listen to the other uh, webinars the past few weeks. Uh, but we understand PowerGen. We have a lot of different... Uh, um, vibration solutions for power gen. Um, we have ground fault detection technologies through one of our companies called Acumetrics. Uh, we can do proximity probe troubleshooting and testing with our portable vibration calibrator from the modal shop, uh, combustion dynamic systems from PCB, um, industrial hygiene, um, which you hear a lot about these days, and that's through our uh, sister company, Larson Davis. Uh, we, we also are related with Temposonics um, that used to be MTS sensors. Now it's involved in the Temposonics um, uh, directly as Amphenol took us over. And they do a lot of position style sensors and tank level sensors. And I always like to have this bullet in there that we, we have a lot of products for slow speed vibration monitoring and hydro power industry. Um, again, this is the power gen series. That's why this slide exists in my presentation, just to kind of talk about what we have within power. So why vibration? Uh, it's a great indicator, if not the best indicator uh, for machine health. I mean, you know, I said I've been in it since the the 90s, later 90s, uh, is when I started in um, vibration. Uh, they had full-blown data collectors back in those days. They were really bulky. The batteries didn't last very long. The sensors were heavy and so on. Um, but, you know, it hasn't really changed. But I think it's it's advanced. It's, uh, it hasn't changed, but it's advanced technology-wise. And you also see a lot more um, people doing it. Um, than they used to, you know, as time progressed. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of new clients, as they get built, they start a program, vibration monitoring program, in their planning for building a plant, uh, which is really good, whereas a lot of, a lot of companies, you know, start the pro program later on. Um, and, you know, we still have a lot of people out there that don't have any type of vibration monitoring program. And a lot of people don't have the budgets for some of these these programs that um, can cost, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100,000 dollars for training and and um, vibration equipment to do it. So, you know, we have affordable products where we can uh, help people start a vibration program or even enhance the program. So 
So this is a this is a question we get occasionally. Somebody says, "I don't have any any vibration program." I heard it's kind of cool that we monitor vibration on our equipment. So, yeah, what what equipment should I monitor? Well, you know, it's always the most important equipment to your plant operations. So, you know, whatever is is there within your plant, whatever kind of plant it is that that spins and turns and spits out the end product that you need to sell to your end customers. Um, you now, some some plants, depending on what it is, the critical equipment, uh, if it stops and quits because of, a, of an issue that wasn't caught by initial vibration measurements, for example, um, to plan for when the machine is down to uh, work on it, um, it can just stop production if it's, if it's failed. Um, also, very, very expensive equipment that's critical to the operation of your plant. And, you know, at the end, I always like to say that um, safety is important. Uh, safety is very important to um, your, your employees, your technicians, whoever's out, out there around the equipment. So, you know, on something that vibrate itself apart and per perhaps when a piece of metal out and hit somebody, which I've heard of it happening uh, on rare occasions, but I've heard of that happening in the past. And the last equipment um, you really want to monitor is probably anything that's rotating that you think you want to monitor. And so it's all easy to do. And then, uh, you know, people build a program from scratch, they, they're wondering who should do the monitoring. This this is always it's a hard question. It varies from plant to plant. You know, you know, large large plants with you know with a lot of money, large budgets. They're able to um, have strict or not strict, but uh, dedicated vibration groups. Um, and these guys are trained in in vibration analysis, infrared, other other PDM technologies. Aside from vibration, so these guys can do all that kind of stuff. So these they're focusing on on strictly predict maintenance in larger plants um, with a, with these dedicated teams. You know, you know, it, again, depending on the plant, some plants might have uh, strictly vibration guys, and, and then part of the group, the guy that might sit next to him, might be strictly a lubrication guy, and there might be strictly a infrared guy. Or they might have one guy might have trending and all of it. You could do all of it. All depends on the client. Um, some some um, programs, specifically online vibration monitoring, is normally managed by operations. You know, if you talk to the maintenance manager, for example, and they're talking to you, maybe mention operations. He'll tell you that operations has the money to spend. I've heard that a lot over the years. Operations has the money. Uh, sometimes, but who does the monitoring? And you know, plant operators sometimes when they're doing their normal walk arounds in the plant, they they may take a vibration reading. It's typically just a basic overall reading if it's something that's not online. So, you know, sometimes maybe twice a day uh, they'll be in there checklist that they need to check the vibration on a certain machine. And so that's that's rare, but I have heard of it being done, um, especially again in larger plants. How often should I monitor my equipment? Um, every month. Uh, and that's there's probably some other people on this call that might be work for us, but I bet they would say once a month, but it's kind of, it, it's, it varies in what, what plants choose and it all goes back to money, you know, plants with dedicated vibration groups. So try to monitor once a month, depending on their number of points they have. Um, sometimes you see it slip to 60 or 90 days or once a quarter, even once a year, um, you know, managers, you know, kind of set the collection frequencies based upon importance and criticality of the equipment and money and so on and so forth. So bottom line, you know, I think you should, uh, when you're starting a program or building a program or even 
doing it, um, you need to you need to look at equipment once per month. So we talked a little about a few slides about offline versus online vibration monitoring, and starting with online. And this this is this is, gets a little bit confusing sometimes to people, but uh, there's some different definitions to online. But, um, online vibration monitoring monitoring um, is continuously monitored equipment that's all the time sending feedback to some sort of system that could provide shutdown of the machine if the uh, vibration levels get high, or you know it could just be sending alarms to the uh, to the uh, plant operators. Um, also, uh, you know, the online system is could be a system that just goes out certain times per day and collects data, vibration data, maybe three times a day, four times a day, once a day, whatever, whatever the client decides that the system goes out and scans data. You know, some some systems, uh, you know, are even designed to take data every every hour, or every ten minutes. You know, kind of all depends. Um, you know, a real good low cost way to monitor all the time is using a transmitter that can give a 4 to 20 output to read in a PLC. And that's continuous monitoring. It's inexpensive to do to set up a point on a machine and do this, but it's, it's a it's a good way to, to look at vibration all the time. Uh, a wireless vibration system is also considered to be an online system, depending on how it's configured and set up and what what wireless system it is. Um, so that's another online system. Um, and probably one of the one of the lowest cost online um, type of device, really, uh, it's not a system, it's a device. It, it is a vibration switch. So it's they're looking at vibration all the time. And if the machine starts vibrating too much, it can shut the machine off or provide feedback somewhere to um, tell the plant there's a problem and maybe shut shut the machine down if they want to. These are just some uh, examples of machines that are monitored online and kind of, uh, you know, this this type of equipment was what I've seen over the years, where somebody's monitoring it online, either all the time um, with transmitters or a monitoring system, or maybe with a scanning type of system where it's scheduling to take data a few times a day. You know, turbines uh, are typically monitored with a protection system, um, especially in a power generation plant. Um, there's pumps, critical pumps that are really high horsepower. Um, they're pumping some kind of product that, that is crucial for the end product of the plant. I've seen, I've seen these fail in the past uh, that are monitored and the plant gets shut down. Uh, at an instance, once at a refinery in California that had a, a monitoring system on it, um, it was a 50,000 horsepower motor had a monitoring system on it. It tripped out the pump for high vibration, but lucky for the plant, they had a redundant motor sitting right next to it, but that motor hadn't run in a, in a long, long time. So right when they started that motor up, it tripped out on vibration too. Uh, so, uh, so not having either one of those motors running, it cost the plant $750,000 per hour while those were down until they could get those back up and running for the loss of revenue from the end product they couldn't produce. Other, other equipment, uh, air handlers, uh, or a critical fans, sometimes in mining, uh, underground mines, there's these exhaust fans or fresh air fans providing workers in the, in the uh, underground mines of air. And those are always monitored, typically with an online protection system as well. Paper machines I've seen monitored with a scanning type of system. Same with rolling mills in the steel industry. There's there's other so many other types of machines, pumps and things that are monitored online. Just depends on what a client wants to do.
these are you know a couple samples of online uh, these are would be protection systems a lot of different names for these but i i've always called them online protection systems so you know these rack mounted um systems they are looking at data all the time these uh can trip plant equipment easily and very quickly and they can take inputs from accelerometers proximity probes and just about any other type of device in the field that they might want to feed into these to to be able to shut the machine down quickly if they need to So advantages and disadvantages of online. Um, the advantages is a uh, is a vibration is uh, the machinery is monitored all the time, twenty four seven, depending on the type of system. If it's a scanning system, it's not. It's going to be tell tell it to the two. Um, another advantage is it saves time uh, from having technicians do walk around walk around the plan all day, which also it could save money in the long run. Um, Keeps people from going into unsafe areas of the plant, so that you know the technicians or whoever are are not being subjected to hazardous conditions. Uh, online systems limits operator error. Uh, you no, know, we used to see that a lot, where you know you always they're putting sensors in different areas of the machines than where they're supposed to, so it's hard to get a good trend on the data. Um, also, an online system can trigger alarms quicker than normal route based walk around. Uh, data. A few disadvantages, uh, running cables is very expensive. Um, these systems can be very expensive. And, you know, you don't, if you don't go around and look at your equipment once in a while and see it and get your eyes on it, uh, that's sometimes bad. So that can cause problems if you don't see it. I mean, something that's, something could be loose. It's not, not supposed to be. There could be maybe some kind of leak. Uh, who knows, but there could be lots of reasons that, uh, that, the, that the vibration online system will miss versus actually seeing the machine. Talk about offline for a few, few slides. Um, you know, offline vibration is typically done with a portable data collector, um, some sort of that, uh, however that may be, um, and scheduled every 30 days, I hope, maybe 60, depends on the plan again, like we talked earlier. Um, another type of system may be just an overall vibration um, data collector of some kind. Um, there's also analog devices out there. I still see some today. I saw a customer order some um, recently. That, and that device just had a needle, a sensor with a needle on the screen that moved and showed a vibration uh, level. Um, and also uh, an offline walk around type of system could be a, a digital sensor um, that provides feedback to a iPhone or iPad. And you know that's a product that Marco will be talking about in a little bit that we, we manufacture. Um, types of uh, equipment that might be monitored for um, this kind of a lot of the same stuff as before, but it's non-critical stuff so you know there's there's a lot of non-critical balance of plant equipment and you know other equipment in plants and you know it's equipment maybe that only runs every so often and so you know the the uh vibration guys or whoever's looking at vibration of plant knows when this is, is running so they'll go out and take data on these machines when they are running so it's the same type of equipment we talked about before pumps fans motors paper machines, uh, gearboxes, and anything else. How do we monitor uh, vibration data offline? Portable data collector. Normally a magnetically um, mounted accelerometer on a cable, stick that on the outside of a machine on the bearing. Uh, usually it's done in the most convenient location to get, get to, but, you know, we like to get axial, vertical, and horizontal um, locations monitor the machine when possible. Um, 
sometimes there's quick disconnect uh, adapters mounted as well on machines. Uh, those pads, you just sort of like a quarter of a turn, stick the sensor on, do it a quarter of a turn. Um, then there could be permanently installed accelerometers on a machine where the technician will just walk up to a junction box, all these feed into, and they just take a, take data off of those. Um, that helps for better, uh, not better, but faster data collections. It's, it's safer again. And the way that works, if you don't know, it's just cables wired to it, accelerometers with cables wired to a termination box somewhere. And there's multiple sizes of these boxes available that you can get depending on the number of channels you have. Um, the manage and disadvantage of offline data collection. Uh, the advantages is you can very quickly perform uh, analysis on a machine, um, even on the spot. A good uh, vibration analyst can look at a data collector, what's going on, and look at potentially see how what's wrong with it based on that data. Um, again, based on that, you can identify what the machinery faults are. Um, you know, on, on these type of systems, you know, you could have just a few, few sensors somewhere or hundreds and your investment is still just the data collector and the sensor for taking the data. So, you know, you can have a 10 channel program or a thousand channel program is the same cost. All it does is take more time to collect the data. Um, disadvantages, the time it takes to collect data versus, uh, versus online. Um, analyzing data requires uh, education typically to get certified to read vibration data and understand it. Um, and also another disadvantage is um, if you're taking data, uh, even every 30 days, like I keep saying, um, you still can miss something. Something could happen in between the times you're taking data. And within that 30 days, within that 60 days or whatever, you could still be a problem. That comes up and the machine fails fast based on that. Some data collector examples. These are full blown data collectors. Um, these these guys that make these. I won't well, make to start a little bit. Before I say that, uh, is it PCB does not make data collectors. All they make is sensors and, and low cost type of um, systems. For monitoring data, but we don't make data collectors. But we do provide um, sensors and cables to just about every vibration data collector company out there. So uh, if you see a data collector, it probably has one of our sensors on the end of it. Uh, it might not say PCB or IMI sensors on it, but it's probably our sensor. But these are just some examples of, of sensor of data collectors. So where do I get started, Marco? All right, Dave. Um, you gave very nice, good overview, and and I think that's one of the things um, we wanted to to show because when it comes to doing vibration uh, on a budget, you know, you have to understand the big picture. You have to understand. Um, what you need to monitor and prioritize. And um, in my case, you know, I like to go back to the basics so we can we can take a look at you know whatever the 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 choice of uh, monitoring you're gonna pick. I mean, essentially, you're gonna have a sensor. You're gonna have an accelerometer, for example. Uh, that's connected to to a, a meter or a readout instrument uh, through cables, and you may or may not have a signal conditioner in the middle. Uh, that signal conditioner may be embedded on the measurement uh, instrumentation. And if if you're starting from scratch, you know, you know, you can. I don't think you can go. Um, Simpler than, you know, with a traditional, a traditional vibration meter. So I'm, I'm showing that up because you know that's how many of us got started, 
And in a meter, you just, uh, you have a, so typically, you know, a, a calibrated piezoelectric accelerometer that you see on the on the left there. Uh, that accelerometer uh, allows you to do to mount to the machine. You know, different ways of mounting. And magnetic mounting is pretty popular, but you could also have uh, stud mounting. And what that gives you is um, you can get a readout on acceleration or velocity. Um, you can also take a reading and look at at um, you know the ISO 2816 for vibration severity, and that uh, see if your machine is uh, above or within the some of the limits that are described on that particular standard. Uh, so that will give you a number um, to begin with. And which is way better than, you know, doing nothing. So you see people going around machines and touching the machine with their hands and fingers uh, and say, mm, it's vibrating. Well, you know, every machine vibrates. So you got to quantify somehow. So that's the first step into that direction. Uh, of course, with the meter, you you don't have a you only have a number you don't have a frequency spectrum so if you want to dive into some more complicated uh troubleshooting or problems or diagnostic you, you you're not going to be able to do that with a meter and this particular meter has also a headphone which is the old school uh, like a doctor's stethoscope where you can listen to the vibration as as well as measure it and so I, I want to mention that because this is a very popular um, type of instrument. There are lots of uh, also press on meters where the sensor and the meter is all together in one piece, which is kind of nice. And that's very inexpensive. And that gives you, again, a quick, a quick and fast uh, reading. The downside is getting a consistent measurement, right? Because, you know, it's very operator dependent. Uh, and the levels will depend on, you know, how you press the, the unit, you know, make sure you got enough force in, and also you're pressing on the right uh, direction. We, we did a little video here, I'm going to just play, you know, where we, you know, we are pressing the meter against uh, a calibrated uh, vibration shaker, and, you know, we we were running the shaker at 3,600 uh, RPM or CPM, and 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 the readings matched. So it's a sanity check. You know, always it's important. You know, no matter what you choose for for your uh, vibration solution, make sure you can trust um, your your sensor, your instrument, your monitoring system. Uh, we did another testing where you know I wasn't holding very strong. Uh, against the shaker and what and also not I was a little bit uh, not perpendicular to the table to the shaker table and when we did that you know you can hear some sounds it can the the velocity measurement that was expected was no longer half inch per second but it was about 0.37 and the acceleration readings were not really stable at all so just a quick check to show no matter what you choose, you know, you want to make sure uh, that you're using it right, right? So it doesn't matter if you're spending a little bit of money or, to, or a lot of money on whatever solution you choose, you want to make sure it's working right. Um, so uh, again, when it comes to an entry level uh, budget-friendly solution, um, there are a lot of um, basically, you know, a sensor centric solution that you can get um, from 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 PCB. And I'm, I just want to highlight a few things here. Um, uh, David mentioned, you know, vibration transmitters um, that can be configured in a number of ways and that can be connected to an existing uh automation plc or dcs system that that you have in place 
there's a very nice webinar that was presented by our colleague Mike Nero uh, a couple of weeks ago. It's available on, on, on our YouTube channel. I encourage everybody to, to, to watch that presentation because it's really, really a nice one where you know, he explains all the little things you want to know about vibration and, and how to use uh, 420 milliamp transmitters. Um, there are switches which uh, also measure vibration and that allows you to shut down a machine. Um, and there's handheld vibration meters and, and digital sensors. Those are all um, uh, entry level solutions that can get you started. And, and when we talk about uh, digital sensors, um, you know, I want to bring that up because uh, that's that's one way to reduce cost on uh, on whatever uh, condition monitoring program that you have. You know, taking advantage of the digital technologies out there, uh, which are you know widespread, the internet, uh, and being able to to take data upload that data to the cloud, you know, storage is available, storage at a very low cost. So if we can get, if we, if we can properly get that vibration information digitized and, and available, you know, that's, um, that's the key thing uh, <clears throat> moving forward um, into this uh, technology, I believe. And, we, and again, you know, why digital? The, the main reason is, uh, again, getting that information available and that you can easily share. And when I say share, because that frees up uh, a lot of uh, resources. Uh, so, for example, you don't, you don't have to have a vibration expert anymore running around your your plant uh your plant floor if you have a tablet or a phone that tells you okay here's the machine i need to measure and have a picture a location where the sensor will be installed you can easily have a technician taking that data and and uploading and, sh and sharing that data to a vibration analyst that may be sitting in a totally different location, but that information can either be shared uh, in real time or, or uploaded to the cloud where you can take a look at the big picture without having to, to be there. Uh, you don't no longer need to have multiple vibration experts running around with uh, tons of uh, equipment. So basically your phone or your, your computer can be the, the data collect, collector the device and um, to enable this technology, it's interesting. It's important to have a sensor that can talk digital. Uh, so one way uh, of doing that, not the only way, but one way is uh, taking advantage of uh, the USB technology, which has been around for 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 some time. And the nice thing about USB, I mean, there are other digital technologies, uh, but the nice thing about USB is the fact that it's available on, on pretty much any device these days, uh, phone or tablet or a PC. And USB is also plug and play. So you don't have to, to set up anything or pair or, you know, create an, uh, an, an address. No, it's, it's, it's you know, it's itself, uh, uh, discoverable. And when it comes to a USB accelerometer, you know, we can take advantage of existing the existing technologies uh, out there. So the same type of accelerometer that we've been using for so many years, you know, we can we can make it digital so we can get the bandwidth, the frequency bandwidth that's required for some some of the applications and some of the failure analysis and and also you can get this in this measurement you know calibrated uh with the right uh, sensitivity uh, by the manufacturer and um, a lot of people ask 
uh, asked me, what is the difference between the di digital and analog accelerometer? So in, in this particular example, the difference is very small. I mean, it's the same, ex essentially the same sensor. One sensor is uh, putting out an analog waveform. The other sensor is putting out a digital waveform. The sensing technology, the sensing element, it's the same type of construction we are using here on a stainless steel housing, hermetically sealed, and you know, calibrating according to the, the traditional ISO standards, uh, 16063. So in, in essentially, we're not sacrificing anything. We're keeping the same bandwidth, uh, frequency, and accuracy. Uh, of course, the, there are some limitations. Uh, one limitation is temperature. So since we have some additional electronics inside the sensor to digitize the signal, uh, that limits the maximum temperature we can get uh, with those digital sensors. Uh, the power scheme, you know, you still need power, but instead of using ICP or IEPE power, which is a constant current source, uh, we are using USB power, which is essentially uh, five volts DC uh, coming from the USB. Um, the amplitude range, I mean, that's more, it depends on the model, but since this is a new technology, there's not an, there, are, there are not as many digital sensors out there yet. Uh, so this particular sensor, the Digiducer, can do 20G speak. Most analog industrial accelerometers uh, are good up to 50Gs. Um, you know, in looking at that in terms of uh, velocity, we're talking about 20, 20 inches per second at 60 hertz. So one way to work around some of the limitations of uh, an existing uh, digital transducers is to, hey, what if I could digitize and just use an, um, a USB signal conditioner where I can essentially take any existing uh, accelerometer that I, I already have or that may already be installed on my machine. So I can go, I can take that analog accelerometer and basically turn that into a USB uh sensing device so that way i can work around some of some of those limitations i just talked about right i can go i can use a higher a high temperature accelerometer and still make it digital i can use an accelerometer that that has a particular cable requirement you know maybe i want to run a long cable or an armored cable uh so uh, that solution allows me to essentially take advantage of the existing technology that's out there uh, with traditional um, accelerometers, piezoelectric accelerometers. So quick summary uh, with the digital accelerometers, you know, we, we want to bring up the connectivity to the game. So when you're running around with your old style meter, you have no connection, you just there with a number on in front of you. Now you can you can take that data and share it with, with the with the rest of the world. And we want to maintain the data quality and keep the cost down. So that's a great uh intro, you know, entry-level solution for anybody who wants to get started on vibration. And just a, a couple of uh, examples here I'm going to go through. So let's say you want to connect a sensor to, to an iPhone. You, you're still going to need a little adapter because the, the typical USB connector, USB-A, or now we see more and more USB-C, but the iPhone happens to have uh, this little Apple Lightning connector. So we've got to use that little adapter. Um, but when you do that, you connect to some of the different apps out there, you, you know, you get the calibration sensitivity loaded automatically. So talking a little bit about that calibration, I mean, the, the calibration information has always been there. So with a traditional data collector that you see on the right, um, you would have to go into one of the menus and, and type in the sensitivity of the sensor you're using. 
which is, you know, there is room for error there in, you know, but you type in the information from the manufacturer, you should be in a good shape. With the digital uh, accelerometers, you know, you have the capability to basically, like we said, it's plug and play. So you can have that calibration information automatically loaded into the app that you have. And uh, talking a little bit about apps, uh, we again, you know, we make the sensor. We don't make the apps. Uh, there are, those are third-party apps. But if you if you look around the the in app environment that talks to 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 the digital accelerometers, you know, uh, most apps will take data and display and calculate the, the vibration to acceleration g's meters per second square or velocity millimeters per second or inches per second. You can get readings of acceleration or velocity. You can compare against uh, ISO levels. And uh, you can also get a frequency information, perform an FFT. Uh, those are the traditional uh, tools, you know. And, but in addition to that, you, take, you can take advantage of the mobile devices where you can get GPS location. You can take a picture of the, the machine you're measuring. So it's that that really simplifies and helps out with the, you know, the reporting, the documentation of the work. Uh, and, and again, you know, sharing that um, with, uh, with, uh, with the people out there. So, so as we move into the digital world, you know, you still have the capability to look at the data real time uh, on the spot and make a decision. So if you are the vibe expert, you can look at that data and you can see, wow, there's something going on here. Uh, but if you're not the vibration expert or the vibration analyst, again, you are one, you're, you're, you're already one step into you know, that sharing that data, either by uploading that to the cloud where, where that can be reviewed by a vibration analyst. And the other thing we see more and more with the industry 4.0 is, uh, uh, companies starting to develop algorithms uh, uh, using the artificial intelligence technology. So where you you can look at a baseline data from a machine when the machine was brand new and start you know learning as as you know as time goes by you know what changes in you know and there are algorithms that can uh, predict. Uh, the degradation of the, a particular machine. So that enables all those different uh, technologies out there, which you know uh, make 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 it easier to to predict what's going on and what's going to happen in the future. So um, so just a quick example. Um, just uh, you you know you can look at that on your your own, but you have like for example solutions such as a uh, Vibe Cloud where there's a web portal where you go there, you can co configure all the measurements and routes that you want your technician to do. You can put on all your machines and, and then you download that to the, to the phone app where the, somebody can go out there and, and collect the data and upload to the cloud where you can see it afterwards. Um, so again, this is just a couple of screenshots there. Uh, but as you can see, you have all the different, you know, the different pumps and fans and things you're going to go by. And, and again, this is all on your phone, so there's no extra cost uh, on, on the equipment side. You know, it's just to make it really easy and simple. And again, you know, the location of the different um, assets that you're trying to manage. Uh, and of course, the reporting capabilities and the dashboards you can create using that kind of uh, application is is really you know there's no limit what you can do there. Um, and you can look at trends. You can easily go back and look at the history on machines and so on. So it's, so it's really up to the application provider what can be done. Um, and last but not least, I want to mention briefly uh, another digital technology that we see more and more, which is wireless. And you know, wireless is becoming more and more available. 
Uh, it's still uh, not there yet, uh, and some of the reasons is just you know the, the the evolution of the technology, and some of the things we are watching we, we see is you know the the capability, the frequency capability of some of those sensors, although it's getting much better. Um, calibration is still something that uh, I don't often see with some of the wireless sensors and and the range you can get with those. So this, uh, the whole wireless topic, it's probably a good subject for another webinar, but just, uh, you know, this is coming, uh, we are seeing more and more, uh, but again, if you, whatever your budget is, you gotta watch out the total cost of ownership, whatever the system you pick. So some of the wireless devices are cheaper, some are more expensive, uh, there is a battery cost. Some of those sensors, uh, you cannot change the battery. You may have to replace the sensor. So there's a there's a labor cost required to replace the sensor and reinstall and commission a new sensor. So all those things uh, are things to keep in mind when you're looking at a wireless or a wired uh, solution. So um, just want to conclude here uh, with a few remarks. Um, Again, you know, machine monitoring is important. And if you are on a limited budget, or even if you have um, as much budget possible, you need to understand the big picture and the solutions that are out there. Uh, we can definitely help you to get started into the vibration world. And if you if you understand uh, your assets and how to prioritize them, you, you make the best use of the, the existing budget. A lot of this technology is available to if you want to try before you you want to you make a decision. We rent uh, this uh, sensors and 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 equipment that some some of the equipment we show here today, and and digital technologies are definitely enabling uh, easier access to the data, uh, analysis and reporting, and driving the cost down. So some of, um, wondering, Dave. Um, if you want to add any other remarks to what I just said. Oh, Marco, I think that you pretty much uh, you know, did a great job. Thank you and, and wrapped it up uh, fine. Just uh, remember to collect data every 30 days. And I want to thank you guys very much. Uh, we'll be available for questions. And you can also email Amanda or, or you know, call us on, on the numbers on the screen.